This is code.org. Let's see. Oh, I already lost. You should have stuff to... Oh, I wasn't even pressing the right keys to play a game with over here. If you don't, you need to go back and do the other parts of this lesson. Um, or go watch the tutorials in mind if you're stuck. Let's see. Do this. Find the code comment, sprite interactions, and read the comments in that section. So remember, comments are for us. They're not for someone who plays the game. The computer skips over them. They are just for us, the programmer. Programmers leave notes to each other using those comments. All right, so I'm looking for sprite interaction, which is right here, and we're supposed to read these. Okay, sprite interaction. Reset the coin when the player touches it. Ooh, I already have an idea for that. It must be similar. So what are we going to check? If the player touches it. So we need a control, we need a conditional, we need an if statement, right? Because we're checking if the player touches it. Now, if, and remember we have that block in sprites is touching, hopefully we do. Yep. So if sprite is touching target, well, what do I want to know? I'm asking the computer now, if the player is touching what? Well, I actually named my uh, lemon, which is my target, target. It was their suggestion, I left it. So if my player is touching the lemon, is touching the target, the computer will mark that as true. So each time the draw loop runs, which is 30 times a second, I'm asking the computer, hey, player touching the lemon, player touching the target, player touching the target. If this is true, it will run the code inside. If this is false, the computer says false. Nope, player's on the other side of the screen. What are you talking about? So most of the time, this will be false. It just skips over it and runs the it, all the code beneath the if statement. If it's true, it runs the code in the if statements and then keeps running the code beneath. The only difference there, false, it doesn't run in the stuff inside. True, it runs the stuff inside. So if the player is touching the target, what do we need to do? We need to ran, uh, reset the coin. So how should we reset it? Well, I think we're going to randomize it, right? So we need it to go somewhere else on the screen. So I'm going to have an X and a Y. And I'm going to say target dot Y, target dot X. And we want it to be on the screen for sure. So as we did in the last section, we did 50 to 350 because we know 50 to 350, either our X or 50 to 350, I mean, 50 to 350 Y or 50 to 350 X will be on the screen. So 50 to 350. And then I'm going to do that again. And so now when the player touches the lemon, touches the target, touches the coin, whatever you have, the computer running this 30 times a second will say true. And the coin will magically randomly go to the X and Y value, a new one. Okay, great. Yep. Create two new collisions that make the two obstacles push the player across the screen. Well, first, let's try this thing out. Oh, that was not good. Oh, I'm hitting W. W's not the key. Ah, oh, it worked. All right, now I need my collisions to... Okay, so now I need a sprite. Make the obstacles push the player. Uh, we can try a few things. So I'm going to try a collide, and I'm going to try a displace, because we have two of them. So now we can try both, because maybe we're not sure. Keep in mind, if you hover over one of these and say, see examples, it gives you a ton of info. It even gives you this thingy. I watch it all the time. All right, so... Obstacle two will do. Uh, it's going to displace the player. That makes sense to me, I guess. And then now, obstacle. And we might have to change up the order I'm putting these words because is the player the target in this? I'm not 100% sure. Let me hit run. Oh, now you can't tell, but that was pushing me down. Okay. So if that's working, what I'm going to do then is let's see. If that works, that would be obstacle two, displace. I want to know what collide does, so I'm going to test these one at a time. Oh, so that doesn't do anything. Okay, that just stops the hammer. So let's see if we do now on obstacle one, displace player. So let's see if it will push the player. Oh, it does. And I think that's what we want. Whoa, no, no, no. Okay, so that's what we want. And so keep in mind with these four blocks, uh, what's happening here is they have a hidden conditional, a hidden if statement inside, and it's asking the question right now, if the player is touching obstacle one, if the player is touching obstacle two, and if it's true, it displaces, it allows it to push the player or bounce the player, things like that. Create two new conditions that make the two obstacles push the player across the screen. Test your code. Okay, let's see. No. Ah! <laughs> Not, not me, I have a... And we already tested the lemon, so we're doing 
pretty good. Onward.